Praise the Lord, saints. Welcome to another Bible study here at Friendship Mission Church for the Homeless and the Poor here at Montgomery, Alabama. Pastor and founder, Vince Rosada. My name is Minister Warren Rudd. And today's sermon, we're going to be talking about why, why, why. Why people complain, why Jesus is going to do what he needs to do because you're complaining, and why it was never about you. You know, because I keep hearing a lot of people talk about why, why, why. Why this, Lord? Why that, Lord? And it ain't never been about them. So we're going to look at why, why, why today? Why things happen the way they do? Why Jesus said he's going to do certain things? And why it has never been about you? So get your Bible, get your paper, get your pen, and get ready for a mighty word from God. And as I always say, there you go, right there. Mm -hmm. God bless you. All right. Everybody got your Bibles? Amen. Let's go to Besides 
this man. Before I, anybody know what man it is? It's basically called angels' food. Yeah. God was providing for them morning and evening. I was never away from them. Amen. They were following by a cloud by day and by fire by night. But He was providing for them. Yes, sir. But they're saying we. This is not a time for that, sir. That, you know, I appreciate your question. Okay. But I gotta stay on this flow. I gotta go. All right. Would you do that at your church? At your center of the pastor? No, you asked the question. No, I didn't, but it's in reference. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. All right. Anyway, let us continue. They followed them by a cloud by day and fire by night. Amen? Amen. And they were being provided for by the Holy Ghost and by God. But once they got out there in that wilderness and they didn't have the meat or the fish or the leeks or whatever, they began to complain. But manning is angel's food. That's the best food you can get. Matter of fact, I was watching a documentary where a man is still growing in the world. You know, they would make cakes out of it and do what they need to do and eat it. But they still wanted to go. They'd rather be in slavery than to be in freedom. I mean, it's like that. You beg for freedom, but once you get it, you find out freedom is very hard. Hmm. It takes money to live freedom. <laughs> Amen. It takes money. I'm trying to, you know, get some things going on at my home, trying to, you know, train up a boy in the way that she should go, train up a child in the way that she should go. But guess what? They've been given so much that they don't know how to struggle for it, fight for it, or work for it. Because it's always provided for them. <laughs> you know, when I was growing up, we were told one thing, when you turn 18, you either going to get a job, you either going to go in the military, or you're going to school. But one of these things that's going to happen is you're getting out of here. <laughs> no. But that made me more of a man. I didn't like it, but it made me more of a man. Amen? I appreciate what my uncles and my parents did now. You know? Well, let's keep reading. Where do we leave off at? Verse, let's go to 7. And the man it was, uh, cool. what's that word? Oh, yeah. Good, good. seed and the color thereof as the color of, uh, what's that word, though? Good. See, I told you, I don't know how to read. That's the day I can't see that. Verse 8, and the people went about and gathered it and ground and ground it into meal, or beat it in a mortar, and baked it in pans, and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was as the taste of flesh, fresh oil. And when the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell upon it. Then Moses heard the people weep throughout their families, every man in the door of his tent. And the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly. Moses also was displeased. And Moses said unto the Lord, Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? And wherefore have I not found favor, favor in thy sight that thou layest the burden of all his people upon me? Verse 12, have I conceived all these people? Say, did I birth them? Have I begotten them? That thou shouldest say unto me, carry them into thy bosom as a nursing father, bear the suckling child unto the land which thou swearest unto their father. Now all I'm trying to bring out is this, is when God's providing for you, why are you complaining? Amen. You know, you'd rather go back to where you thought it was good. See, Egypt is a type of slavery. Egypt is a type of going back to your old ways, your old condition, and your old sin. When God brought you out to give you something new, why do you want to stay back with it? Then you want to say it's good. Wait a minute, you cried to me for 400 years, and now you're saying this fantastic food that angels eat called manna, you want to go back to cucumbers and leeks. Mm. Hello. Mm. You know, I'm hungry, Lord. I'm eating out of trash cans. We'll go to friendship and not give you a real good meal. And then you get here and you're like, this ain't good. This don't taste good. I think I'll go back to the trash can. That's a shame. But here it is. God don't like complaining. It displeases him. You need to be thanking him the fact that your eyes woke up today, the fact that you can speak, the fact that you can hear, the fact that he gave you a brain to figure out where to go to get something to eat. But complaining? Uh-uh. So let me show you what Jesus said about when you do, why, 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 and why you shouldn't complain unto the Lord. Amen? Go to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew 25. And let's look at verse, starting at verse 35. 
For I was a hunger, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hunger, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Truly, rarely means truly, truly, I say unto you, in as much as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brothers, you have done it unto me. Amen. Now he's talking to the religious. He said, you ain't helped nobody. You know, you visit somebody, you provide for somebody, you help somebody clothe them or give them a place to sleep. You ain't really just helping them, you're also doing it unto Jesus. Amen. Amen. You're doing it to them. So every time y'all walk in here, don't you know Rosario gets a crown? Ryan gets a crown. Anybody who works in staff gets a crown. Jeffrey gets a crown. Steele gets a crown because he drives y'all back. Everybody who is serving the Lord receives a crown because he's doing it unto Jesus. When he picks you up, feeds you, lay you down, give you a place to sleep, give you something to eat. But watch what happens here. Go to verse 40, let me go 41. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. There you go. Hell was not prepared for you. Hell was never made for you. Ain't that what it said? It was made for the devil and the angels who followed him. And that's all the devil wants to do. He wants to convince you to go with them. Amen. Amen. He's doing a pretty good job in some instances, isn't he? All he wants to do is take as many as God's children with him straight to hell. I ain't know. I'm sorry. That wasn't made for me. Was it made for you? Amen. Verse 42. For this is why. For I was a hunger, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked and you clothed me not. Sick in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister? I like how they put the word minister. Mm, did not minister unto you, because minister means one who does menial duty. Me standing here as a minister is doing menial duties. I'm taking the lowest state. Don't never exalt a man because he's at the pulpit. He ain't no different than you. Don't exalt me. I'm not to be exalted. I'm here to exalt Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen? Amen. I'm doing a menial duty because I'm fighting my way into heaven every day just like you. Because he ain't going to stand with me. I don't want to stand with you. My biggest fear, people, is to stand before God. He look at me and say, why did you do what I told you to do? Oh, you was doing it, but you had an ulterior motive to get rich. So guess what? Depart from me. I never knew you. Oh, man, that scares me. I don't care if I ever get a dime. As long as I get one soul into heaven. Amen. And they can say, no, it was because of Brother Warren. I'm in here. Well, I can see you on the streets of gold. You look at me and say, thank you, brother, for bringing me that word. Amen. Forget that pocket. I ain't about the pocket. I'm about his glory. Oh, we can jump ahead of myself. Man. What verse I leave off? Oh, okay. Whew. Verse 45. Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you did it not to one of my least of these, you did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into Eternal, life eternal. What is life eternal? That's a Greek word called zoe. And you also have another word for life called bios. Bios <coughs> means what? Physical life. Uh, zoe means eternal. Okay? Amen. Let's go to Romans chapter 12 and watch what Paul says. Paul is just going to quote Jesus to a certain degree. But y'all feel what I'm saying? Amen. 